Welcome back to the Free Rocky Nation. I'm your host, Amanda Carrasco. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. Follow us on Instagram. We post our YouTube videos there as well. Elections are coming and we help you to be in the know before you step into the voting booth or mail in your ballot. Don't want to see my face? That's fine. We have a podcast channel available wherever you get your podcasts. If you appreciate my updates with or without my face on where your tax dollars are going and how corrupt the Illinois government actually is, be sure and support us on Patreon. Monthly subscribers get free gifts from my dad and a free Rocky Nation sticker to proudly display wherever. Now that our introductions are out of the way, let's get to today's video. Today I will do an unboxing video. And I lost my place. I'm sorry. I'm going to do an unboxing video and talk about why you should care about the prison commissary. I'm opening a package of ramen noodles from the Illinois River Commissary. My dad mailed this to me. I have not opened it prior to now. My dad told me that the noodles are covered in little red ants. And just talking about it is making me itchy. <laughs> when my dad tried to show the noodles to the commissary manager, Buko, Sergeant Buko is his name, Buko got lippy with my dad. Buko said, and I quote, I don't want to talk about it. You didn't buy that here. As if my dad has other options where he can get his food. Like the prison commissary is it. He does not have other options. Yes, he got those noodles there. So, Buko, shame on you. When, it, when did it become humane to serve people food covered in bugs? Okay guys, let's open it. I don't feel safe opening it without gloves on. And my house panthers are coming to join us for the unboxing. I didn't even know if it was okay to have it outside, like just sitting, even though it's wrapped up in a manila envelope. I didn't know if that was even safe enough, so I wrapped it in a plastic bag and tied it shut just to be on the safe side. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here it is. Oh, I didn't realize my dad sent me a letter as well. Okay, so here's the package. Uh, this is a refried, or it says refried, spicy refried beans, and it has a Ziploc on it. And my dad put the noodles in here. Okay, so I'm gonna get this close to the camera here in just a second. Uh, I'm trying to find a really good spot that showcases what what my dad is talking about. I think there's one right yeah right there where that white thing is and there's that red semicircle. Uh, I think I'm trying to get it in focus for you. 
I think there's one right there. Which is kind of disgusting. There's some on the noodles. I'm gonna see if I can get it close enough. Yeah, on the noodles. I'm trying to show you. This corner will probably be better. This is so much harder than I thought it would be. I don't know, can you guys see this? You'll have to let me know if you can see this. You can definitely see some hanging out. Yeah, there. See all those little red specks hanging out in the bottom of the bag? Yes. Okay, there's a good shot. All right. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but the package is completely unopened. My dad looked at it before he opened it. So, it's completely unopened. There is no reason. It's not like my dad opened it and left it out and the ants got to it. So, um, there's no reason ants should be in there. Um, my dad said this is becoming a more common occurrence with items coming from the commissary. He's saying he's finding... Um, oh, here. Okay, here is a letter my dad wrote me. There's a letter my dad wrote me. I don't know if this will work, but, um, okay. This was on the letter. Yeah, you see that? That looks like either one of those bugs or at least an egg casing from the bug. Yeah. So there are some of those on the letter that he wrote me uh, with the noodles, okay? I'm gonna seal that back up. Hope you weren't hungry. I probably ruined your, <coughs> ruined your appetite. I apologize for coughing. I am recovering from COVID. Um, right now I have a slightly runny nose and a dry cough. That's all I have left from COVID. Um, just wondering if I have any of that ant debris on me because that just sounds disgusting. Ooh. All right. So you might ask, why should I care about the commissary? Why should you care about the commissary? Why should you care if a prisoner gets to buy things at the commissary at all? These are good questions. So let's take a look at the facts. First, the Illinois Department of Corrections requires 3.2 billion taxpayer dollars per year in order to operate. Programs like the commissary are in place to offset this amount. Initially, the commissary was established 
as a privilege. The prisoner was allowed to buy extra food, clothing, cosmetics, writing supplies, stationery, electronics. All of those products had a 10% write-up. Revenue from the commissary went into a separate account called the Inmate Benefit Fund. The Inmate Benefit Fund in, was in turn used to buy leisure time items like basketballs, softball equipment, and cable services. In 2005, Governor Bogoyevich changed the commissary into a money-making operation. He increased the write-up on each item sold at the commissary from 10% to 25%. The state stopped issuing items like laundry soap or body soap, razors, envelopes, and hygiene bags. Inmates were forced to purchase these items from the commissary. As a gesture of goodwill, inmates were given a $10 a month stipend to offset the burden of these new costs. The state was trying to show some compassion toward the indigent, poor prisoner. Inmates still receive that stipend today and it is $13 now. Increase all prices by 15%, but give $10 to compensate, only $10. If that isn't some Illinois math right there, I don't know what is. Governor Bogoyevich's law is now known as Corrections 730 ILCS 5-3-4-3 Section C. Along with the increase in prices, Bogoyevich dismantled the Inmate Benefit Fund. In his new law, Bogoyevich specified how commissary revenue is to be spent. The law says, quote, 40% of the profits on sales from commissary stores shall be expended by the department for the special benefit of committed persons, which shall include but not be limited to the advancement of inmate payrolls for the special benefits of employees and for the advancement of reimbursement of employee travel, provided that amounts expended for all employees shall not exceed the amount of profits from sales made to employees by such commissaries as determined by the department. The remainder of profits from sales from, a commiss from commissary stores must be used first to pay for wages and benefits covered under a collective bargaining agreement who are employed at commissary facilities of the department and then pay the cost of the dietary staff. Did you know the prison staff have their own separate commissary at each prison? Yeah, they do. Guess who pays to stock that commissary? If you guessed that taxes pay for that, then you would be right. Bogoyevich addressed that in his law too. He designated that the revenue from the 10% write-up at the staff commissary would go toward paying their wages for time off of the prison campus when staff have to transport inmates. This move cut the IDOC budget by millions each year. So what happened to the inmate benefit fund that the inmate commissary was supposed to be supporting? Bogoyevich dismantled it. Instead, he, in his law, allocated 60% of the profits from the prisoner commissary went to the dietary staff, such as commiss commissary workers and kitchen workers. Bogoyevich was attempting to relieve Illinois, attempting to relieve millions of dollars in staff wages from Illinois taxpayers. So how does this all play out at the Illinois River of Correctional Center? How does this all play out at the Illinois River Correctional Center? At Illinois River Correctional Center, four employees ring out sales daily in the commissary. They have a supervisor, so we have five commissary staffers every day. Then the kitchen has dietary supervisors on all three shifts. There are 12 to 15 supervisors employed. 
Prison workers perform most of the jobs in the prison system. For example, the prisoner cooks the food and serves it. Prisoners clean up the kitchen and the cafeteria. Okay. Revenue from the commissary pays the prisoner workers wages as well. Acting Illinois Department of Corrections Director Jeffries and Jared Brunk have created the Commissary Standardization Committee. This committee, which is really just Jared Brunk, as appointed by Director Jeffries, has cut the commissary down to a bare bones shop. First, he swapped out all the decent items and opted for the lowest quality items. Second, he reduced the selection down to one eighth of the prior items. Third, he charges way more than the legally allowed 25% write-up. Lastly, Brunk has illegally abolished the once a week A grade shop. Prisoners are now shopping once a month. Brunk has literally cut commissary profits by 75%. This is so illegal. To add insult to injury, he allows the wardens to put a $150 spending limit in place on that monthly shop. Guys, $150 does not go that far, okay? It doesn't go that far. At the end of the day, less items sold means less profits made. So what happens when the prison commissary fails to generate the necessary amount of money to cover wages? The responsibility falls on the taxpayer. Yes, you and I are required to start paying staff wages again because Brunk is running the commissary in the red. Illegally, did I mention this is all illegal? This is abuse under the color of law. Brunk is abusing his power to moderate prison commissary operations such that tax dollars have to support his methods. Because of Blagojevich's requirements, inmates have the right to commissary. Commissary is no longer classified as a privilege. Brunk is trampling on prisoner rights and he is doing it illegally. You cannot restrict inmate access to the commissary unless that inmate has broken a rule and is being punished. All of Illinois' inmates are being punished right now, not individuals, the whole lot. The Illinois River Correctional Center's yearly budget is now 38 million, $38 million. no, it's supposed to be $3.8 billion. It's supposed to be $3.8 billion. I messed up when I was typing that. I apologize. Do you think that will ever decrease? Not unless state's attorneys start using Senate Bill 2129 to release people. Let's look at the commissary issue from the prisoner's perspective. Hold on, I'm gonna to have to get back to you on the Illinois River budget because it can't be thirty-eight billion eight hundred ninety-four thousand eight hundred ninety-four million one hundred fifty. No, thirty-eight million eight hundred ninety-four thousand one hundred fifty dollars. That's what I'm sorry. Brain fart. I apologize. <laughs> Hopefully, I get to edit that out. Okay, so let's look at the commissary issue from the prisoner's perspective. Most prisoners live month to month on whatever money their families add to their books. This money is your money, your hard-earned money, after you pay taxes. 
Many families, many families struggle to come up with this money. Guys on the inside know this, so they try to make it stretch as far as they can. Right now, your loved ones, my loved one, is being sold the bottom of the barrel items at an inflated price. Your loved one, my loved one, gets less value for each dollar spent. Your loved one and my father are livid. They know that the 25% write-up is not being adhered to. They know that no one actually supervises the prison staff. Even though we pay the wages of all the supervisors who are supposed to do the actual supervising. Inmates receive a rule book when they first arrive at the prison. The rule book says if he follows the rules, he will get to shop once a week in A grade status. And A grade status means no limit. They're shopping to generate that income, to pay staff wages. The prisoner does follow the rules, but he doesn't get to shop weekly. The warden will not make the unionized staff do their jobs. The rules are only enforced on the prisoner. The prisoner no longer sees rules. The ones in power do not have to do their job do not have to adhere to the rules. The prison only consists of the haves and the have-nots. Let's pour salt in the wound, shall we? When the prisoner finally gets to his once a month shop, nothing's in stock. Two packs of Pop-Tarts become one. Four boxes of snack cakes become two. Six bags of chips become zero. The rules regarding the limits aren't even followed. When your loved ones finally ask why this is happening, they are told, hey, you're a prisoner. We can treat you any way we want. Why? <laughs> because we're lazy and we want to punish you for filing grievances and winning lawsuits. What are you going to do about it? You're going to start a podcast or expose us on the internet or something? I see you, staff. Dad says that the food in the chow hall has been cut to almost nothing on the trays. Pritzker has cut the IDOC dietary budget twice. The inmates don't get condiments or the legally required calorie count anymore. How sad is it when we can't do packets of ketchup or mayo or hot sauce? I'm sure the food tastes like crap. Give these guys some hot sauce. Dad has two letters from Warden Clark at Illinois River Correctional Center. Both of the letters say, quote, the commissary standardization committee is not removing items from the commissary in retaliation for grievances and lawsuits. Removing items has been done so that the prisons can streamline the commissary and each A grade prisoner can shop once a week. <coughs> <coughs> I just told you that the staff have literally told the inmates they are being punished. I also told you that the inmates are shopping once a month, not once a week. So, Warden Clark, you're a liar. It's your tax dollars at work here, people. It's your hard-earned money on your loved one's books. When are you gonna hold IDOC and Pritzker accountable? Pritzker personally appointed Director Jeffries. Jeffries personally appointed Jared Brunk. And Jared Brunk is running the commissary operations into the ground. He's literally said about his educational program where the Illinois Correctional, the ICC, the Illinois Correctional, or ICI, Illinois Correctional Industries, yes, are going to be turned into a model of 
an education, like vocational training, but he hasn't explained how the ICI industry, which I've addressed in my podcast, uh, was generating $33 million a year. Most of that was being sold internally, but 50% of that $33 million was entirely profit because it was being, those were products that were generated within the prison from ICI, from the Illinois Correctional Industries, by the inmates within the prisons, and it was sold to outside industries. There are even laws in place in Illinois that say, before you go shopping somewhere else, you have to check out ICI and purchase from them first. He shut that whole out that whole 15% down. He shut that off and now ICI is only generating and selling internally and it's not really selling internally. It's being turned into a vocational training program. I'm all for vocational training. I just want to know how we're going to make up that revenue. Okay, so he's cut that off. He has cut down the revenue that the commissary could be making 75%. This is being sanctioned by I IDOC Director Jeffries, which is being sanctioned by Pritzker, so this corruption, this abuse of power, this misappropriation of government funds goes all the way to the top. If prisoners constantly see that the law is only applied to them, then IDOC will eventually release an angry citizen, not a rehabilitated person. This angry citizen then becomes your next door neighbor. I'm going to end this video with an email from my dad about his most recent trip to the commissary since August 19th, 2022. I finally got to shop today. The time span is August 3rd to August 19th, so we are shopping faster now. 16 day cycle, but Morel, who is the warehouse supervisor at Illinois Correctional Center, cannot keep the store stocked. No sodas today, no Coke, no Mr. Pibb, no Sprite, only Diet Coke. I will not waste my money on Diet Coke again. Also, no potato chips, no barbecue potato chips. He totally removed the barbecue chips. No whole shebang potato chips, no Cheetos, not even any popcorn. Have not been able to buy any potato chips since June. Four House got the last of the stock again. I'll talk about that in a second. No sodas, except for the Diet Coke. One tub of cheese when we are supposed to get two. One bag of cookies when we're supposed to get two. One jar of peanut butter when we're supposed to get two. One box of Pop-Tarts when we're supposed to get two. No mustard, no barbecue sauce. No Spam Singles, no Snack Crackers, no Chili Wet Packs. Today I'm going to mail you the Ramen Noodle Pack. It's sealed. Inside you will find tiny red ants. I took it back to the commissary today to show Buko. He would not even acknowledge it. Stated, I did not get it at the commissary. Funny, because it ain't like I can run down to Walmart and buy a bag of ramen chicken soup. Heavy on the ants inside. So I'm sending it home for another story for you. Buko would not address it as if it came from the factory or was a warehouse problem. Like, not my problem. Six were sealed with tiny red ants inside. So, great story to tell. Because I only get to shop at one store. My friends had the red ants in their chili ramen, too. The super small red ants are not like the black ants we have here. This is a new breed of really small ones. You'll see it when you get the ramen pack. So, do a little research. See where these... Tiny red ants thrive in America, for I've never seen them in Illinois before. Morel is inept at his job, so we must get him removed. One house is always one house always shops with nothing in stock. Dad. Like, subscribe, follow on Instagram, donate on Patreon, listen to our podcast, read the books on Amazon. All about the free Rocky Nation.